Hello everyone, welcome back to the Wisconsin Greg Show. Uh, today I'm going to attempt to uh, do a Bob Ross style painting. Um, it's going to be uh, painted with black, gray, and white uh, gesso. Uh, and then it's going to be clear coated with a liquid clear. It's a product made by Bob Ross. Uh, I've never used it before and I'm not affiliated with them or anything. I'm just going to give it a try and see how it works. Um, and then uh, we're going to put a clear glaze over it, uh, different colors over different parts of the painting and see how that turns out. Um, it looks like a pretty cool painting. Uh, you can check out his video of him showing you how to do it. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, it's called Rays of Sunshine uh, by Bob Ross and it's uh, Season 28, Episode 4. Uh, so... I'm going to be following along with that and uh, let you guys watch me. I'm not no expert painter. I'm just a beginner, and I'm trying to encourage other people to get into painting uh, or artwork of some sort. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing to get into, and uh, uh, I just have a problem getting enough time to do it. Uh, but uh, if you can get the time, and you can get pretty good at it, if it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, just a few minutes a day, if you can do that, would be very, very good. Uh, so hopefully I can encourage some people to get into the art business uh, just to have fun or maybe even advance into a business. Uh, so watch this video and see what you think and compare me to Bob Ross and see how mine looks compared to his and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so we'll jump right in it and get started. Okay, uh, like I was saying, I'll be painting on a black uh, gessoed um, canvas covered board. Uh, it would be better if it was just a stretched canvas board uh, because I'm going to be using Bob Ross's uh, um, liquid clear. Um, and it's, it, from what I understand, it's better to use it on a canvas because on a canvas covered board, a stretch canvas instead of a canvas covered board, uh, stretch canvas uh, won't suck it up as much as a canvas covered board. The board kind of will suck it up and dry it out quicker. Uh, but that's all I have, so I'm going to deal with it, and uh, I think it'll be okay. We'll see how it goes. So uh, let's get started. Now I got my old paint shirt on, and I'm ready to paint. Uh, sorry, once in a while you might hear a space heater in the background. It's kind of nasty here in Wisconsin, and I uh, didn't have anything better else to do than paint. So, uh, but it's a little chilly up here. I'm upstairs, and uh, so I got the space heater going. So I'm gonna start with some white gesso here and a paper towel, and uh, I'm gonna start where my light source is gonna be, just a little bit left of uh, center here, and. Um, just gonna dab it on there and kind of work our way out to the outsides from the center. So I'm gonna call this my light source here. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And uh, this is going to be where the sun's going to be shining through, through the, through the trees. I'm just going to let this dry for probably, I don't know, however long it takes to dry. Uh, I'm guessing around 15, 20 minutes, and I'll be right back. Put you on pause here for a moment, and we'll get started as soon as it's dry. 
Okay, I'm back. The white gesso is all dry. I uh, can't remember what it took, probably 20 minutes to a half an hour. Uh, took a little bit longer than I expected in this area right here where I put it on pretty heavy. Um, but anyways, uh, now we're going to go with the black and uh, we're going to make some tree trees standing and we're going to use the black where it's the lightest area right in this area. And then on the sides we'll go with the... Um, the gray and then to the white as it goes out further. So it'll be black, gray, white, black, gray, and white. Um, and then uh, and then you want to let it dry between each color. Um, so we're going to do the black and then uh, let that dry and I'll come back and do the gray and I'll let that dry and I'll come back and do the, the white uh, tree stumps and I'll let that dry. Uh, and then we can get in after we get uh, all everything all done and all the gesso uh, this is all gesso uh, after it's completely dry we can come back and uh, give it a uh, um, liquid clear on there uh, and then we'll be switching over to the oil paints uh, from my understanding you always want to put oil paints over acrylics you never want to put acrylics over oil paints um, so that's, I'll start doing some of these trees here. I won't videotape all of it uh, because it'll be a little boring, uh, but I'll show you a little bit how we get started here. Using a foam brush, a disposable foam brush. Like he says, you don't want to make your trees all perfect, just make them however. Trees are not perfect. I'm going to leave that for, for the black trees right now and uh, uh, I'm going to paint the branches on the black trees and I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little brush for that. Now I'm just thinning this black gesso out a little bit with water so I can make some branches. Trying not to make them perfect, just make them go every direction. This is kind of fun. Painting should be fun. I'm going to put a few little ones coming up from the base, a little stragglers here and there coming up. That looks good for me for the black. I'm going to let that dry and uh, then get into the gray. Okay, I'm back. The black trees are all dry. Now I'm going to put in some gray, a few gray trees, not too many, and then we'll go into the white trees after that. 
I'm going to use the foam brush again just like I did the black trees. Uh, I noticed my trees are a little bit um, wider or thicker than his are. I'm going to make a few skinnier ones. Try to anyways here. I'm going to put a gray one right here. A couple gray ones over here. And then I'll put the branches on here with a little liner brush again. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and come back and do the white trees. Okay, now I'm going to paint some uh, white trees in. Not very many. I'm only going to try to squeeze one in on this side and maybe two on this side. I'm not sure yet. Um, the can canvas that Bob Ross uses was uh, quite a bit bigger. Uh, mine's only 11 by 14. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I should have maybe went with a little less trees, but um, it's okay so far. It's, it's working out okay. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I'm really squeezing them in there, but that's okay. It's going to be a really dense forest. That's all right.
Okay. Uh, let that dry and I'm going to come down here and uh, well actually I'm going to let that dry and I'm, I'm going to put on a great big one that's a black colored tree that's going to be leaning. It's going to be leaning off to the side here. Something like that. And only bigger and thick. So. Actually it's not going to be getting into the white so I can actually do that right now. Loading this up pretty good with some pretty good black paint here because I want to make this one pretty thick. And I think we'll go like right about here. And we've got to make noises according to Bob Ross. He says when you make these big trees like this, you got to make a noise. And I'm going to try it. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not sure if I made the right noise or not, but it worked. It probably sounded kind of ridiculous, but that's what Bob Ross said to do. <laughs> I'm going to thin my paint out a little bit here, the black, and uh, make some branches on this big old black tree here. Um, doing it similar to what Bob Ross did, but it's not going to be exact. No two paintings are ever exact. So just let your uh, minds run wild and do what you think looks good. This is like, well, I think this is, I'm going to have to call this the funnest painting I've done so far. Can't remember. I haven't done very many paintings. I seem to never get time. I should be doing a whole lot more. I need practice. But it's very hard to get practice when you're out plowing snow and going to work and trying to do your laundry and dishes and it's always something to do. But practice is where you get good, but it's hard to do when you got so much going on. There, I think I'm going to leave it right there. I'm almost getting to the point where I'm overworking it, getting a little too much in there. Especially for this size of a um, painting, it's uh, just getting to be a little bit too much. But so far, I'm okay with it. And get some color in there, I think it'll look pretty good. Some transparent color over the top of this. Um, but when this dries, then I'm going to do the bushes and stuff the shrubbery around here and uh, make a pathway through here. So uh, we'll let this dry and we'll come back. I'll be right back with you. So far, this is all gesso. Just remember, this is all gesso. There's no oil paint in here yet. Black, gray, and white gesso. So we'll be right back as soon as this dries. All right, I'm back. Uh, now I'm going to kind of form where the path is going to be and put the shrubs and bushes and stuff around the base, around the edges of where the path is going to be. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out with a foam brush and I'm going to use, uh, start out with the white 
And uh, we're just going to make some some uh, brush. Use the brush any direction, he says. Uh, you can do this with paper towel or the brush. Now I'm going to go uh, right into the gray. And I'm going to make my path come uh, right through here. And um, I'm going to actually put a little bit of white on the tips over here, just a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in there, not much, just a little bit here and there. And we got our path through there. Now, he said you could use paper towel to do that too. I think I'm going to do a little bit of, with the paper towel just to give it a little bit of a different pattern. Alright, I'm happy with that. <clears throat> well, I'll let that dry real well and then we'll get uh, back in and uh, we'll start with the oil uh, over the liquid clear. Put the liquid clear on first and then we'll start giving her some color uh, with the transparent colors. So uh, I'm going to let this dry. It's going to take a while to dry because this is pretty thick down in here. Uh, but it's kind of cool. It gives it some pattern. Looks like some bushes and shrubs and through there. And uh, Actually one thing I did forget is I got to put my pathway in there uh, with a little gray. And uh, I'm going to use a little gray and a little bit of white maybe. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to let that dry. And it's going to take a little while, probably an hour or two. And uh, then we'll come back and color it. Uh, there is some things I would do different next time, uh, but that's why I do this. It's a, a way to learn. You don't learn unless you do it. Uh, one thing I would do differently is uh, I would make sure I get this white up here all the way around the edges. Instead of leaving some dark. I think it'll look better, but we'll see. Uh, Maybe I'll like it after it's colored like that. We'll see. 
Um, another thing I would do is I would take my time more on the trees and get more finer uh, branches, real fine. And uh, I would probably leave some of the trees out uh, on the size of a painting. Uh, uh, there's a little, to me it's a little overdone, a little too much paint, too many trees. Uh, I think it would look a little bit better with uh, just a little bit less trees in there. Um, but we'll see what it looks like when it's all done and uh, that's that's the whole point of doing this stuff is to practice and learn uh, I'm no I'm just a beginner myself and uh, the way I the reason I do this is to get everybody else out there to so they can learn and not be ashamed uh, everybody has to learn from somewhere so uh, we all make mistakes uh, and uh, as uh, I think Bob Ross says uh, we don't make mistakes uh, we make uh, I can't remember what he says. Happy. I can't remember. I'll have to go look and see what he says. Yeah, I had to go look and see what he says. He said, we don't make mistakes. We make happy accidents. And uh, I've made a lot of happy accidents. But uh, that's how you learn. Okay, I'm back. And uh, the... The black and white and gray gesso has all been dry for several hours. It's all completely dry. Uh, so now I'm going to give it a light coating of uh, the Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I've never used this before, so this is a new experience for me. Um, let me see if I can get this on camera. This is what it looks like. And um, if you get too much on there with a brush, he says you can take a paper towel and what, give it a wipe off because you want a thin layer on there. But um, I think I can do it okay with a brush. We'll see how it goes here. says this is the hardest part of the whole painting is putting this on. Uh, I didn't really quite understand it, but I can kind of see what he's talking about now because it's got a little bit of a, a honey consistency to it. It's a little bit thick. A little bit goes a long ways though. You want it on very, very thin according to him. It's very, very clear, all right. I can't hardly see where it's at. So that's why you got to make sure you got around there good. You want it on there very evenly. And I think that's pretty good. This is the start of the oil painting now and we're going to kind of put kind of a glaze onto it. And the first thing we're going to put on is the phalo blue. And uh, it's, it, it takes very very little of it I guess. This is, you can always start out with less and put more but it's always it's best to always have to not to put too much on at first. So I'm going to start on the outside edges on the top. right down to the tops of the whites here of the bushes down here and the reason he does that is because later when he puts in some yellow the yellow and the blue turns it to a greenish color okay. 
Kind of cool, I kind of like it. Okay. Now he uh, takes a little bit of the Prussian, Prussian blue. Um, let me show you these on camera. This is the first one that I put on. And uh, this is the second one I'm gonna put on. Hopefully you can see that. I might be saying the name wrong. Prussian blue, Prussian blue. And uh, just gonna put a little tiny bit of this around the top corners and maybe over the top a little bit. Just very, very little. Uh, this will make it darker so the center will look lighter. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this uh, Indian yellow. I've never used this color before. Um, it looks really kind of orangish looking to me. Uh, but we'll see. That's what Bob Ross recommended. So we'll give that a try. See how it kind of turns a little bit of a greenish color? I'm going to do a little bit down here too to get a little greenish color down here. And I checked his video. He just covers the whole thing. He says it doesn't matter. So we'll just go like he does. And he says you can bring some of the green up into the trees if you want a little bit. That looks kind of cool. Now in his video he says if you want this uh, edges of these to be a little bit brighter green, uh, you can use a sap green. So I'm going to do that. He didn't do that in his. He just went with the blue and the yellow mixing turning the green. Uh, but I want a little bit greener on the edges and I'm going to give that a try. So I'm going to use some sap green. Gave it just a slight more green color. I'm not sure if you can tell, uh, but not a whole lot of difference. 
Now I'm gonna take a little bit of a alizarin crimson and uh, a little bit of the sap green, more of the alizarin crimson. Uh, Bob Ross said he wanted it to be a little bit more on the red side, so I'm gonna go with uh, what he wanted and give that a try and see how it works out. Um, so I'm gonna mix them together right now. And then we're gonna put that down here on the bottom side here and uh, because this is going to be kind of the dark, further away it's darker. So that's what we're going for. Okay, so I got her mixed up and uh, going to start in this corner. We want it dark and kind of work its way up. And you can go as far as you want, he says. I'm going to add just a little bit more sap green in here. It's a little bit redder than I wanted, but we'll see. It looks okay. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now he says you can stop at this point, or if you want to, you can lighten this spot up right up in here where you, wherever you think the light should be coming through. And you can use a little bit of titanium white, very, very little. I'm going to start with just a very, very tiny bit, and I can always use more. Um, and kind of make it look like it's, the light is coming through there. And he says to put it right over the, the branch. You use a little bit bigger brush here. Uh, I didn't like that. I probably shouldn't have done that. I was almost tempted not to, but thought I'd give it a try and I didn't like it. I'm going to see if I can take that off. One good thing about oil painting, you can always change it. Let's see if we can save it.
Oh, I think we saved her. I was worried there for a minute. You can go watch his video, which I said at the beginning. I'll leave a link down in below um, in the description. And um, it's called Bob Ross Golden Rays of Sunshine. Um, it's ep uh, season, 20, season 28, episode 4. And I'll leave that link down below. Um, you can go and watch and see how he put the, the rays of sun coming through there. Um, I wasn't real crazy about when he did it, but I thought I'd give it a try, um, and I still ain't crazy about it, so I, 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 I didn't like it, and I probably shouldn't have tried it, but anyways, I saved it, uh, it'll be alright, and, uh, I'm gonna sign my name on here, and, uh, that's gonna be the end of this video, so, uh, make sure you go and check out Bob Ross's video, and then watch this one, and, uh, See what you think. Um, I'm just a beginner, but I'm trying to encourage everybody to get out there and paint. Um, and you can see I made a mistake here. It didn't turn out, but I, I saved it, reversed it, and uh, I think it's okay. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day, everyone. Bye now.